Are you a high performing parent, entrepreneur, or high achiever in pursuit of excellence? Welcome to The Nexus Podcast, a podcast custom tailored for families like ours, driven, affluent, and eager to lead extraordinary lives. From rockstar stay-at-home moms to high-producing CEOs, we choose to model success for everyone we are surrounded by. We prioritize health over sickness, embrace a vitalistic lifestyle, and seek to tap into the limitless potential that God has bestowed upon us. I'm Dr. Daniel Kimbley, your host, and on this podcast, we'll uncover the secrets to living a fulfilling and abundant life where you and your loved ones can thrive physically, mentally, and spiritually. Together, we'll forge a path to greatness and unleash your God-given capabilities. Get ready to say yes to a life of true prosperity and well-being. This is The Nexus Podcast. What is up, family? Welcome back to another episode of the podcast, and you know I'm your host. And what I want to talk about this week is something that has come up over and over again in my office. And if you listen to the podcast for any length of time, you know that everything that I talk about is either questions that parents ask me, things that I'm thinking out about in regards to what happens inside of our practice, or things that people are experiencing or new cases that are coming in to just shed some light on like what's happening and things that I'm more or less inspired by because I'm what I want to see is I want to see the world change. I want to see happier, healthier families. And one of the things that's really been coming up a lot the last couple of weeks is this idea of emotional regulation. And when we talk about emotional regulation, it's really interesting because there's a group of people who I think would say like kids are going to have temper tantrums, which I would agree that they are. Kids are going to have emotional outbursts, which I I agree that they are because they don't have the prerequisite skills yet to be able to fully control their emotions. And so a lot of times what we'll see is we have these parents who are coming into our office and you know the kid, kiddos having temper tantrums or they're breaking down and or maybe they're throwing things or they're hitting and like there's a lots of different scenarios in which we could see this play out. But one of the things that we see is that as kiddos start chiropractic care, they start to regulate their emotions better. And a lot of this comes from this place of understanding exactly how the brain develops. Because when you understand how the brain develops, then it makes a very clear picture of why a kiddo would or would not have temper tantrums in the first place, of why a kiddo would be able to regulate their emotions very, very well, or they would not be able to regulate their emotions very, very well. And you probably heard me talk about this before if you've heard me on any other episode of the podcast, but one of the things I think is so interesting is that before the first breath of life, kids are developing a pain or pleasure response. That's right, when they're in utero, when they're in mom's belly, kiddos are actually learning to be primed more for a fight or flight response or a rest and digest response. We call it pain or pleasure. And so, Literally, if mom's stressed out in pregnancy, we know through the research that baby's going to be born into the world under more stress, um, under more sympathetic load, under more sympathetic dominance, if you will, which just means the fight or flight branch of the nervous system is firing. They feel, they're feeling stressed, even though they don't know why, because they're getting stress hormones directly from mom and that affects how their brain develops. So this is what's interesting is that we know the first eight months of life with kiddos is when synaptic development peaks. So the first eight months, so synaptic development literally means how the brain is creating connections within itself. And so if the kiddo is set up well in the first eight months of life, the less likely that they're going to have emotional outbursts, the less likely that they're going to have a host of other lifestyle diseases. And you know, we could go on if we get into like the weeds of the research and what it actually says is that kiddos who experience less stress end up making more money, they end up, they have lower uh, divorce rates, they have lower alcohol and drug abuse rates, they have higher mortality rates, meaning that they actually live longer, that they live longer with less disease. There's a whole bunch of stuff that comes from kiddos who grow up in a place of not being stressed out. And so anyway, that's a conversation for a different episode of the podcast. I've certainly talked about it before, but what I want to talk about this week is specifically how this relates to development. And so if we look at, okay, synaptic development peaks at the age of eight months old. Eight months old is when your kiddo is literally being primed for what's going to happen for the rest of their lives. Eight months old, we synaptic development peaks. So what happens is the brain develops from an inside out approach or a bottom up approach. And so what that means is like when a kiddo is born into the world, first breath of life, they're primarily functioning from their brain stem. The brain stem is the innermost part of the brain. And what that brain stem is responsible for is safety. It's responsible for food. It's responsible for our vital um, functions like breathing and digestion. It's responsible for like safety. That's it, it's really responsible for safety. I want food, I want warmth, I want shelter, and I want oxygen to breathe, that's all I care about. So if the brain, or if that kiddo, 
feels like it is safe to now or has that safety, what will happen is that their emotional system or the second layer of the brain, the limbic system, will start to develop. The limbic system is very much the emotional part of the brain. It's responsible for other things, but we'll just talk about it in the context of emotions. And so when the limbic system starts to develop, this is where we get all the motion, emotions. Interestingly enough, the limbic system is primarily run through the temporal lobe. So the temporal lobe, so when we think of the word temper tantrum, what we're actually talking about is like temporal lobe firing in a way that in which it can't be controlled. And the reason it can't be controlled is because the top part of the brain, the very outermost layer of the brain, which is called the cortex or the neocortex, is responsible for turning off or telling the temporal lobe to relax. So think about it this way. If the brain stem is firing and we feel safety, then the limbic system can come on and tell the brain that, hey, we're safe. We can express other emotions. We can experience love. We can experience connection. We can experience frustration. We can take risks. Those kind of things that are very emotional, right? But if we don't have safety, we can't experience those things. So then if that limbic system starts to get strong, then the next layer of the brain, the cortex can come in and say, hey, it's not an appropriate time to express that emotion. Let's express this other emotion instead. And so what happens, as you see, is that if we had a weak top part of the brain or frontal cortex of the brain, then what we will start to get is a lack of control over the limbic system. And so what happens when we talk about temper tantrums, it's literally coming from the temporal lobe of the brain and the frontal cortex is not strong enough to turn off those emotions to say, hey, we don't need to freak out this much because we took the iPad away. Or we don't need to freak out this much because you didn't get this snack instead of the snack that you really, really wanted. And there are a million different scenarios of this. So here's what's interesting is we have these families come into us and they're like, my six-year-old, my four-year-old, my two-year-old, whatever the age is, it doesn't necessarily matter, my 12, 11, 12-year-old. They have so much difficulty regulating their emotions. Like th this is the intensity of some of the cases that we see in our office. Kiddo we're taking care of, 10, year 10 years old. This 10 year old, every time he would get his iPad taken away and it was time for bedtime, he would throw stuff, he would kick, he would scream, he would have these outbursts that were like uncontrollable. I sit down with dad at the kiddo's first six week reevaluation where we re-measure everything that we test to see what's actually happening with his brain. And what we found from the first test to the second test is this, is that dad told me, he said the night before they took his son's iPad away and he was about to throw a glass plate down their stairs and break it because he was frustrated. And he realized, dad said to me, he said, I realized I had this moment that this is the first time in six weeks that I've, had, I've seen him have this outburst. And he used to have them every single night. Now, why is this the case? It's the case because the frontal cortex of the brain is stimulated through movement of the joints of the spine. And so what we did with this kiddo through the chiropractic adjustments that we provide to him based on what's happening with his brain specifically, we can adjust him in a way that wakes up his frontal cortex and it, make it makes it stronger. And his frontal cortex can come in and say, hey, we don't need to express that emotion. Like, yes, it's frustrating, but we don't need to have the outburst and throw the plate down the stairs. And we're watching in real time in six weeks, like this kiddo's emotional regulation completely change. And we, I see it all the time. Like families, we have a kiddo who's two years old. Um, and one of the, like one of the biggest successes, the parents are like, she can just sit and she can like pay attention and focus on stuff for longer. And it's such a cool thing to watch these families who are like, I don't know what to do with my kiddo. It's so frustrating. It's so challenging and watch kids be able to control their bodies again. And it's the interesting part is like, it's not because they were ever broken. It's because their front part of their brain was weak. And interestingly enough, if we go back to birth, remember what I talked about this pain or pleasure or this, yeah, pain or pleasure response is developing is that those stress hormones that are developed in that pain or pleasure response are the same hormones that weaken the front part of the brain, that turn off the front part of the brain. These are the fight or flight hormones, cortisol, adrenaline, norepinephrine. And the reason that those stress hormones function to turn off the front part of the brain is because we don't need to have rational decision making. We don't need to have control over our emotions if something is attacking us. We either need to be able to kill it and fight it or we either need to be able to run away from it. None of those require emotions of connection, of empathy, of sympathy, things like that. And so what happens is the stress hormones turn off the front part of the brain and our body responds with a safety survival mode, which is let's go fight that thing. And if we are stuck in a stressed out state, 
that your kids cannot feel, that you cannot feel, that there's only one way that I know of to measure it, and that would be through heart rate variability, through, through paraspinal thermography, through a series of neurological tests that can actually ma measure where the brain is functioning, then you have no idea like what's possible for your kiddo or for one of your friend's kiddos because the reality is like ev all of us have the same potential to be successful. Yes, there are differences, but the, 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 the reality of it is, is like we all have the same potential to be able to control our emotions. And I, it breaks my heart when I have parents come in and they sit down with me and they're like, you know, I compare my kid to all the other kids that are at the park, or I compare my kid to all the other kids or that are at our church small group, or I compare my kid to all the other kids that are in the daycare. And I just feel like they're behind and I feel like their emotions are suffering and I feel like their language isn't developing well. And the reality is, is like if that kiddo was brought up in a stressful state, even before their first breath of life, it's negatively affecting their ability to function from the frontal cortex of their brain. And what they often start doing is functioning from the temporal lobe of the brain. What's interesting about the temporal lobe of the brain too, like temporal can also mean time. And so what happens is people who function in the temporal lobe, they start to get anxiety because they're always worried about the future or always worried about the past or worried that they're not good enough. And so, unless we have a strong front part of the brain, top brain, cortex, neocortex, to be able to turn off and regulate those emotions of the temporal lobes, then we get difficulty with emotional regulation and that's where we get the outbursts, that's where we get the frustration, that's where we get the tantrums, that's where we get the kiddos who say, I just can't control my body, I don't know how to control my body. That's where we get the kiddo who tries one thing one time and then they have an outburst and they completely give up versus being persistent and going after it again and again and again and again because the difference is that the front part of the brain, the outer cortex of the brain is what's responsible for our grit. It's responsible for our willpower. It's responsible for our determination. It's responsible for figuring out good versus bad and right versus wrong. It's responsible for all of our emotional intelligence and our connection to other people. It's responsible for faith, hope, optimism. I, I could go on and on and on about the skills involved in the deep, rich, like what it means to be a human being that's housed in the frontal cortex of our brain. But the reality is, is that most of us, most of us fire and function all day long from our temporal lobes or even lower. We're in a brainstem safety state. And that's where the lack of emotional regulation comes in. So chiropractic care, if done correctly, when we apply movement to the joints of the spine, we know that movement of the joints of the spine done at a specific speed can wake up the frontal cortex and put a direct input into the frontal cortex of the brain. When we do that, think of it like a workout for, a, for the brain. We start to strengthen the frontal cortex and then as it gets stronger, it can start to regulate emotions emotions. And that's what we see with nearly every single parent, every single family that we, that comes into us seeking help with their kiddos emotion, emotional regulation. And it's not because the kids are broken. It's because that's a normal, it's a normal response in a stressed out state to have a big outburst, right? That's a normal function of our body to keep us safe and protected, but it doesn't serve us well in school. It doesn't serve us well in our relationships. And this is why I get so passionate about what we do inside of our office at Nexus Family Chiropractic is because reality is like what we're really doing for people is connecting them back to their life, connecting them back to the source of life and the source of vitality where they don't have to live in a safety state. They can live in a thriving state where they don't have to live in a state where they can't control their emotions and don't understand why. And then like the, the difference that this makes in an entire family where they're like, oh, we can go on trips again. We can take our kid to the restaurant again. We can do things that we couldn't have done before. And that's what it's all about is like living a quality of life that's worth living. And I don't know anywhere else where you can get it. That's why I'm so passionate about chiropractic and the way it changed my life. And I know it's possible because I've seen it with hundreds of families that we've taken care of. So my friends, my question for you is this, is like, do you know someone? Are you maybe yourself, your kiddos, uh, grandkids suffering with abil inability to regulate emotions and remembering that synaptic development peaks at eight months of age. And so catching this sooner before we even know it's an issue is super important because a lot of times what we see is like, we'll see kiddos who are born, they're colicky, they're gassy, they're fussy all the time, they don't sleep well. And then that leads right into their synaptic development peak at eight months of age. And then they start having difficulty sleeping. And we start at two years old, we start noticing that they have difficulty focusing and regulating their emotions. And then at four years old, they become a problem at preschool. And then at six and seven and eight years old, they start having digestive issues and anxiety and these huge outbursts. And then at 13 years old, it's really, really a problem. And the reality is this could have all been taken care of way back before the first breath of life ever even started with mom having chiropractic care and addressing her stressful hormones on in her system. But that's a conversation for a different episode. My friends, I love you, I appreciate you, and I will come 
at you again next week. Peace.